We are back. I'm your host, Barry Wackler, here with the always lovely and talented Andrea Kay, the always incredible Urban Miaris, and we have our next guest. actually have two with us. Yes. One in studio, one on the phone. We have David Lopez uh, from Teach for America and uh, Brett Chappelle, uh, the director for the Veterans Initiative uh, over at the Honor Foundation, right? Am I right or wrong? Actually, I'm with uh, the Veterans Initiative uh, with Teach for America, but okay. we are a partner with the Honor Foundation. Yeah. Great. I knew there was a connection Absolutely. there. So welcome, Brett. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Great. So Teach for America. Now, coming from a family full of school teachers, okay, father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, who knows? I mean, that, that probably goes back way too far before teaching was actually a profession. So uh, anyway, tell us a little bit more about what Teach for America does. Sure. Well, you know, since you brought in the, the personal connection, um, I'll just tell you why I really appreciate uh, teachers, educators, and, mm-hmm. and have an incredible value for them. I was a struggling student um, growing up as an English learner, low-income background myself here in San Diego County. Um, I flunked seventh and eighth grade, um, and that was after you know many, many years of struggling. And then in high school, things really started to turn around with some teachers that were truly incredible. Um, Mrs. Gassaway, she's, she was one of them. Hopefully one day she listens to this interview, but uh, <laughs> she, she really helped to tap into my uh, interest in science. She helped me land an internship at the Salk Institute of La Jolla. Wow. It was, fabulous. It was Salk fabulous. Institute. Yeah. Okay. She's still teaching? She is not. She's retired. Oh, dang. Because um, I know some people that could use her. Well, <laughs> you know, anytime you want to tell a great story, just call us up, bring her in, and we'll have you tell the story yeah. together. That would be, if, if maybe, again, this interview finds her out there and she can reach out. But yeah, it, it was the, those experiences in high school that really made me believe in the power of, of educators to um, really put people on a completely different path than they're on. And, and so now through Teach for America, which is a national nonprofit, I help to start the local branch here in San Diego in my hometown. And we partner with schools, districts, and communities to make sure that they have access to some really uh, high achieving top leaders to teach in, in high need areas, um, especially in the areas of science, mathematics, special education, and bilingual education. Great. Yeah. Great. So Brett, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so um, I went to went to I grew up kind of similar in a in a uh, low income community in Colorado. I I thought you were either born smart or you weren't, and I thought I wasn't born smart. Um, but uh, I'm glad we learned athlete. because I'd have been in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to I went to college and on a scholarship uh, for an athletic scholarship and and was more focused on that than I was uh, school and when I completed my eligibility and and that was the end of that I thought I, uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do we uh, invaded Iraq um, so I enlisted in the Navy went through the basic underwater demolition SEAL program and was stationed at SEAL Team Eight um, and then yeah after I got out of the military I did some uh, regu- you know some typical uh, private uh or just some some work in, in in the civilian world and felt like i was missing something and went back to school uh and realized that i was smart i just didn't apply myself um and uh wanted to serve and i and i came across teach for america and uh so that connection to service was reignited and uh wanted to get back and um, do something for my country and community. So, um, yeah, I got picked up by the Corps and taught for three, two and a half years in Phoenix, Arizona as part of the uh, Phoenix Corps. Great. Great. Now, was that where you were recorded? And there, I heard that there's a phenomenal, amazing, inspiring YouTube video about you and your work Ooh, in, yeah. some, in <laughs> some tough school environments, kind of like that movie with Michelle Pfeiffer. Tell us about that. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I uh, I just really connected with the students, um, and I really related to them in a lot of ways. And um, I felt like, you know, that's one of the reasons I jumped on the military uh, veteran initiative with Teach for America. Is I felt, for whatever reason, that veterans have a uh, um, a connection with with uh, kids from uh, you know low income environments. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I had great connection. I, I at the whenever I um, resigned, come onto the Veterans Initiative, I was told we were doing a uh, um, a fire drill or or something at the gym, and we went in there. And uh, yeah, they threw this huge going away uh, celebration for me. It was amazing. It was uh, 
Yeah, really special. Thank you for <laughs> bringing that up. Yeah, well, it just goes to show that, you know, dedicated people like you can truly make a difference, even in some of the harshest, you know, environments. Is that the goal of Teach for America? What is the goal of yeah. the organization? Well, that's a great question. Thank you. So in terms of our of, of our goal, I think you could really divide it into two parts. Um, one, we're really looking for people to make a lifetime commitment for being advocates and contributors to making sure all kids have access to an excellent education. So whenever we talk to people, we say, you know, we, we're looking for you to really sign on for life. But you start that commitment in every case by being at least uh, a teacher for two years in one mm. of these low-income communities. And um, it's it's really a transformative experience for our people. Only one in five of our applicants to the program say that they want to be in education for the long term. Yet after the program, nearly two-thirds of them stay in education directly for the long term. Wow. And so you know that just goes to show once you're in that classroom and you see some of the incredible challenges that our students face growing up in low-income communities, yeah. how attached you become to that idea that you can actually be a contributor, you can make a difference, and that they really deserve to have the same opportunities as, as all kids across our country. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious what, you know, what the, uh, you take, go into the community with the, uh, the low-income communities, go into the schools, what would that look like without somebody like you? You know, it's an interesting, in, interesting thought. Yeah. I mean, you know, I would imagine another way to say that might be, you know, the dropout rate goes down when you guys are there. Right. The it, graduation rate goes up. Um, you know, they're maybe involved in less crime, involved in less gangs. They've got hope for a future. How many of them go on to college that never would have gone to college? And now they're getting educated and going out in the workforce and, you know, becoming great contributors to society and when they otherwise would not. Well, I think for, for us here in San Diego, um, we really think about our innovation economy a lot. And we think about how in San Diego, 60% of our students are from a low income background in right. all of our public schools. And a, a lot of people don't realize that. It's no, I really, didn't know that. No, the majority of our kids in, in public schools here are low income. And what does that mean for our future workforce if our low income students are graduating from college at a rate of only 10%? And with a STEM degree, a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics degree at only 1%, right? That mm -hmm. means that out of the 300,000 low-income students approximately we have in the county, 3,000 of them will have a STEM degree from, from, um, from college. Wow. If we're trying to sustain and grow our innovation economy, it doesn't happen with those kind of numbers. And so what we're looking at Teach for America is how do we partner with schools, with districts, with the community, with other nonprofits like Barrio Logan College Institute mm -hmm. and Reality Changers, and, and work together to make sure that more of our kids are having that kind of quality education that prepares them to go into the innovation economy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, with uh, today's lifestyle, I, I guess you could say, for, for young students, especially in low-income communities, their first mentors are their teachers. Absolutely. Because uh, their parents aren't around or they're from broken families or other circumstances. It happens more in low-income communities than uh, elsewhere, and that's why the teacher is so important. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, going into this, the experience and all, and I know you do training now in that area with this low-income community for the teachers. That's absolutely right. So one of the things that we do with our teachers that, that um, I think is incredibly valuable for them is we spend two years with them after they've started teaching in a coaching role, making sure right. that they have someone wow. there that can tell them, look, this is where you could even do better. This is something that you're already doing really well. Um, and, and I know that they really appreciate the fact that they know they're not alone in that classroom, that they have at least one resource from Teach for America, as well as from their schools and other mentors that is going to give them that guidance and support. Yeah. You're listening to Close Up on Saying Good Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at am1170theanswer.com. Give us a tweet at CloseUpSD. Email me at BarryCloseUpSanDiego.com or find our page on Facebook. We want to hear from you. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with the always lovely and talented Andrea Kay, the always incredible Ermin Miaris, and our guests are Brett Chappelle and David Lopez from Teach for America, another amazing service. So, you know, as you're talking... I'm getting these great ideas because what, what a lot of people don't know, or actually they do know if they listen to our, our opening segment, is I love to connect people to other good people to other good mm -hmm. people and mm -hmm. other businesses to businesses. And I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, you remember StarPal? You yeah. Know, where they have yeah. an after-school program in, uh, down in the inner city. Okay. Mm -hmm. That helps out. And I would love to take one or both of you down to, it's off of... Um, uh, Mission Gorge, uh, Steam Maker and 3Rs Robotics. That he has a uh, nonprofit that he teaches the kids all these creative, innovative stuff. He's amazing. 
Victor Cicerelli. So mm-hmm. you know, maybe that can that can help uh, connect a few dots on some things. That sounds wonderful. So, so uh, tell you know, uh, I normally ask this of other other people, like we had our, our uh, personal injury attorney that had some great stories, <laughs> yeah. which uh, Andrew's still <laughs> laughing about that. Wes Sig Miller. No, don't yeah. get her going. Don't no. get her going. No. Tell me yeah. a, a, any great stories from uh, from all the great work that you do. Sure. I mean, uh, I don't want to take away from any stories Brett has, but um, here in San Diego, one of the things we're really focused on is how do we recruit people who actually grew up in San Diego in some of the same neighborhoods that we work with and convince them to either stay in San Diego or come back. And so one of the stories I like to tell is of one of our teachers who's been teaching uh, math now for the last year um, in the South Bay, and she grew up in Southeast San Diego, and she graduated from Lincoln High, which is one of our historically um, uh, underperforming schools that, that definitely has a lot of challenges that, that it's facing. Um, they've been doing great work to to bring up um, their academics and to give the students a lot of uh, additional opportunities there. Um, but Joanna Mejia Salgado, this is the teacher's name, she jokes that she Googled herself to Harvard, and she sort of half-jokingly says that because <laughs> she had to kind of figure it out on her own. But, you know, she went off to Harvard and wow. graduated with a psychology degree. Fabulous. And oh she knew that gosh. she really wanted to pay that forward somehow in her own community here in San Diego. And so through Teach for America, we were able to get her back here. And again, as I mentioned, now she's been teaching math for a year down in, in South Bay. And um, her students love her. They have a great relationship with her. Obviously, she can really relate with their experience and be a role model that says, look, I went through the challenges. I overcame them. You can too. You know, I, I have to make a comment here because there, there was only a couple of spots in that, that you uh, made an interesting note. Do you know how many teachers, and I, I don't know the answer to this, but do you know how many teachers we have out there that have graduated from Harvard? There are not a lot. No. Yet, you have somebody that came from a low income background, mm-hmm. got an opportunity maximized that opportunity and came back and gave back in our community. That is amazing. Yeah, because that 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 degree from Harvard, that what I call a ticket, I mean, that ticket could have taken her anywhere. Yeah. You know, and for her to choose, and, and obviously something about your organization is what made her make that choice. What do you think it was? Well, I think, you know, we really connect with folks on the concept of contribution, Right. It's it's not saying pick a career or pick a job. We're saying you have an opportunity to leverage this incredible leadership. Obviously, if you've made it to Harvard and graduated, you've had to be a real leader. You have to you've had to be a real achiever. You can apply that to making a difference in other students lives. You can apply that to really helping to make progress in terms of our educational system in the United States. And so by painting that bigger picture and and giving people the opportunity to connect into something bigger than them, I think is what really hooks our people. And then you put them in front of students. You know, you only have to give someone a little bit of time with these incredible students before they come become completely enamored with, right. with the students and, and are really ready to continue yeah. in that work. Now, under recruiting, if someone wanted to get involved with you, what, what, what would be the credential date? Would they have to have a college degree already or... That's uh, correct. What yeah. are you looking for? So all of our uh, teachers have to have at least a bachelor's degree. Many of them possess a master's or above. But, yeah, the, the minimum requirement is that, is that they have a bachelor's. They can visit our website at www.teachforamerica.org where there's plenty of information on how to apply to the program. Um, across the country, we get about 50,000 applicants per year. We end up taking about 10,000 of them. Um, so it's a very selective program. We're, again, we're looking for really top achieving folks, but um, we welcome all the applications. And, and if anyone has any questions, um, there's lots of frequently asked questions and stuff on the website. That's great. Now, let's talk a little bit about the veterans arm of it. Brett. Yes. Um, yeah, no. So the, the military vet initiative was founded in 2012 um, around a belief that students greatly benefit from uh, traits that, and characteristics that uh, military veterans learn while in the service, um, along, as well as their just depth of experience and leadership. Um, and we felt if they brought that to the classroom, that would be value to uh, to our students. Um, this year, we have over 100 teachers who are either military veterans or veteran spouses that are uh, going to be serving in the Teach for America Corps across the United States. So, Awesome. Yeah. And now, how can they get more information if somebody's listening? Because we got a lot of veterans listeners and organizations if, if they want to get involved. Same web address, same process? <laughs> Same web address, same process. Um, there is a uh, there is a, de- a designated landing page. So if they if they Google search Teach for America uh, Military or Veterans Initiative, that would take them to that landing page. 
Um, and they can always reach out to myself or Eddie Exum. I'm brett.chapel at teachforamerica.org. Um, and Eddie's uh, eddie.exum at teachforamerica.org, yes. Great. Great. Well, we are starting to run short on time. Um, anything, any last uh, comments you want to leave for our listeners? Well, I, I would just say as someone who grew up in San Diego and, and had the pleasure of, of having incredible educators um, here in this in this county, I just want to thank everyone out there who's on the front lines, who's teaching, who is uh, leading a school. Uh, thank you for all the work you do on a daily basis. Um, you have changed so many lives and you don't even realize it. And to the extent that we at Teach for America San Diego can be a partner and help to make sure more of our kids here have access to that excellent education, it is a privilege to be able to, to contribute that service to my community. Great. Brett, any final words? Yeah, you know, if you're a, if you're a veteran and, and you still have a strong desire to serve or for continued national service, um, you want to uh, step into a career that um, you can be someone special again um, and be part of something that's bigger than your, than your own self-interest. Um, this is a, just an amazing career, and you're making a difference every day in, in uh, uh, generations of kids' lives. Great. Hey, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'll remind our listeners, go to www.teachforamerica.org and uh, check in with them. Uh, we love what you guys do, and I thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much for having thank us. Thank you very much. Great. This is Close Up on San Diego Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at AM 1170, theanswer.com. Send us a tweet at Close Up SD or just find our page on Facebook. You can always email me at Barry at CloseUpSanDiego.com. Let me know what you think. I'm your host, Barry Waxler. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Take care of me.